Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. I know a lot of you really like satin finishes, so today we're going to talk about some tips for coating with satin. Now there are actually a lot of different ways to get a satin finish. You can do a rub on satin finish. A lot of oils finish out at a round satin. Um, it's, you know, the same degree of sheen is available in a lot of different finishes. But one of the more difficult ones is spraying satin finishes. And that's what I get a lot of questions about. And a lot of those questions are, for example, how do I polish imperfections out of my satin finish and all of that. Now there are, to a degree, ways to do that, usually using, you know, things like steel wool and paste finishing wax. And I've got some of that information in an old video of mine titled, I believe, how to turn a gloss finish matte or satin. There are ways to do that, but really, when you're spraying a satin finish, the idea is you can't polish it because then it'll just become gloss. It'll polish out. Uh, so you should be able to get your satin finish, your very last coat, that's the most important one, right, either out of the gun or out of the can. So if you've been paying attention to this project, you know that I've been doing this whole thing with Oxford nitrocellulose lacquers. It's a vintage nitrocellulose formula. Uh, that's what we're using here, and we're going for a satin finish. We're gonna talk in a second about how to build this up, but just before I move on, because people ask me a lot of questions about the stuff that I use, these guys right now are only available in Canada, but they're going to be available in the States soon, I believe, if you are looking for them and you're in a place where you can get them. Uh, the link will be in the description, and if you happen to pick them up, please let them know when, upon purchase, there's a place to put it in, that you found them through me. I would appreciate it, it helps me kind of keep going with these guys. What I've done here, and what I recommend you do if you're building up a satin finish and you're not super familiar with it and it, you know, you're doing it over time, is you build it up with gloss first. And then at the very final stage, you sand it smooth and you put on your satin. Now, some of you may have just taken that tip at face value, but I feel like a lot of you are probably wondering why. The answer is that your gloss finishes are designed to be perfectly clear, right? That's kind of how they work, you know? And you can build up a finish quite a bit with them safely. Whereas a satin finish and a matte finish are a little different. There's usually an additive in them that makes them satin or matte. And if you build up too much of that additive, what you can have sometimes is something that kind of resembles solvent pop or blushing. So what, what it looks like is just a thin white haze. So sometimes if you try to build up, you know, eight coats of a satin lacquer, and I haven't tried it with this stuff, but still, you end up with this kind of fine white haze in your finish. Now I realize for, for a white guitar, it doesn't matter. So I'm sure somebody was gonna infer that and point it out. I got it. But this is still the preferred method. Usually, at least for me, it's easier to see how even your finish is and how everything looks when you're working with a gloss. And then you can go in and do your final coat of satin after. Okay, so I've got my gloss finish on here. It's not perfect, but that doesn't matter because we're gonna be sanding it. And this has been on here for a week or two. This is a nitrocellulose lacquer. If I was using like a 2K polyurethane or something like that, then I would just leave it 24 hours and then I'd move on to this stage. But now it's time for me to change this to a satin. And like I said, when you move on to your satin, you don't wanna to have to play around with it. You don't wanna to have to polish it, that sort of thing. You just want it to be good to go. So it's ready to sand. I'm gonna use 800 grit paper, and this is going to smooth out everything about this coat. It's gonna make sure that my gloss is nice and smooth, and it, if I were using something other than a nitro, it, it would also allow my satin to grab onto something. It would give me some, you know, some abrasion, some texture to the surface that my new paint can stick to, while also making sure that everything is nice and smooth. 800 grit is perfect for that, in my opinion. Um, because this is nitrocellulose, it doesn't matter. It will melt into itself, but it does give me a nice opportunity here to smooth everything out because again, the surface as it stands isn't quite perfect. So I'm using actually a piece of acrylic. Comically enough, it's one that I've already glued a piece of <laughs> sandpaper to, but that doesn't matter. I've got a piece of 800 grit paper on it that I'm gonna clean frequently as I go. I'm just dry sanding this. I'm not wet sanding. The, there are a number of reasons for that, but the main one is Lacquer is kind of finicky, and if you wet sand, you can end up with moisture getting into the wood and causing a little bit of swelling, uh, and that swelling can cause your lacquer to crack. But this is my opportunity, and I should be wearing a mask, but I'm narrating, so 
My apologies to my own lungs. Uh, this is your opportunity to smooth everything out, check for any imperfections, and make sure that your surface is nice and level and ready to go so that you can then go in and put one coat, that's all you should need, one coat of your satin on there, maybe two, and get a nice smooth finish coat. Also, if you have any specific imperfections like dust, hair, that sort of thing in your finish, this is your opportunity to get them out, okay? Uh, your, your gloss coat kind of went on there as a leveling item and something to give you the opportunity to sand. Realistically, if you could do this perfectly with one coat of satin or two coats of satin without having to do any kind of leveling, you wouldn't need to go through this step. But it does also allow you to build up a little extra protection. A little extra clear coat is generally a good thing. And I say a little, I don't mean two cans worth of clear coat. For some reason, people seem to think they need to spray two or three cans worth of clear coat onto a guitar. That's not correct, but anyway, whatever. Um, let people do what they want as long as it looks good and turns out the way that they want. I suppose you guys don't need to watch me sand all day. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna keep checking in the light reflection to make sure that I'm leveling things out and I don't have a bunch of glossy spots because those will represent low spots in my finish. And I'm gonna keep cleaning my paper frequently and in a couple minutes, I'm gonna switch to a new piece. And then, We'll film me putting on one or two coats of satin, and that'll be it for this finish. Okay, once our sanding work is done, it's a simple matter. Cleaning this off with some wax and grease remover, and then moving on to the spraying. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna give this a wipe down, let it dry, and then don't, don't forget this step. It's very important, all right? Otherwise, you're just painting dust into your finish, and you're gonna end up with a, with a big mess. It's very much worthwhile to clean your guitar off at, at least once right before you spray, or even a couple times during the process, just to avoid getting gunk everywhere. This also kind of helps you see if there are any residual problems that you need to fix, which should be unlikely at this point, but stranger things have happened. So we do that, let it dry, and then we're ready to spray, and that's it. Well guys, there you have it. That is how you do that. Uh, it's looking pretty good. It would be nice if that were the end of the story. Sometimes I would do two coats and finish it up there. But as you will have seen, I was looking very carefully while I was doing it. And I did notice an imperfection that I'm gonna have to fix. So there's no point in me doing two coats now and just burying that deeper. I have stopped, I'm gonna wait a day and I'm gonna come back and sand that very gently tomorrow around the same time, maybe a little later in the day and fix that, and that will be it. And then we'll move on to assembling this thing. If you've been following this project, it's gonna be pretty cool when it's done. So that about covers it, really. That's my tip for satin finishes and how to build them up. I hope you guys found this helpful. If you did, please feel free to give the video a thumbs up. I would appreciate it, it really helps me out. And remember to subscribe so you can see how this project turns out. Again, I think it's gonna be pretty cool. The guy who commissioned it had some interesting ideas for what to do on this one. So yeah, as always, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time. Have a good one.